You see, there are a lot of parties involved in the plea bargaining process. We have the prosecutor, who's critically, who's strongly involved. The defender, I mean, the accused person is also involved. It has to emanate from a consensual agreement between the accused person and the what? The prosecutor. Of course, in other societies too, the judge is consulted. For instance, if you look at the statement of EFCC, the spokesperson of EFCC came out with a statement after the judgment to indicate certain salient, you know, to provide certain information. And I think the public should look at this uh, information critically. He says, oh, this is not what we agreed. Uh, the commission is, you know, aghast because they said the agreement was even communicated to the judge and that the option of fine was not part of the agreement. But oh. again, you want to ask yourself whether a judge is bound to follow an agreement that will deprive him of the exercise of his discretion. But in this case, all of us are aghast okay. because we believe that what this judgment definitely makes a mockery of our judicial system. All right. Could you and tell then, us then? Yeah, yeah, yes. Pardon me to jump to body because Mr. Kayama says he spoke with Mr. Jacobs. Yep. And Mr. Jacobs says he was not exactly part of that agreement, or that he was not fully knowledgeable about how he went down, if I get what he said properly. No, how that, should that, it I, be? I, I don't think that is what Mr. Fesos Kayama said. Uh, about Mr. Jacobs uh, uh, Mr. About Mr. Jacobs. I think there's no way a plea a disagreement can be finalized without the prosecutor being aware. Because that was my In, point. You understand me? But what Mr. Jacob is not aware, and what he's saying is that he's not a, he's not a party to so, this linear sentence. That was not part of the agreement. Because before a plea bargain is finalized, it is the prosecutor who will bring an amended charge to reflect the understanding. But the prosecutor is not the judge who is to okay. impose the sentence. You understand me? But again, and that is why you can see that... But again, Mr. Shudu, sorry yes, again to come in here. The, the prosecutor should also know that the uh, charges in 19, 18, 19, and 20, if you have to put uh, any fine on it, is just a 250,000 naira each. So he should have known that in all three, if he's found guilty on all three, it amounts to 750,000 naira. There's no way you can blame the prosecutor here. One, the law section 309 of the CPC provides for two years with an option of fine. It didn't indicate the amount of fine. You understand me? So, so they fix it. So, uh, so, so, so Jacobs cannot know. And there's nobody who can blame Jacobs. As far as prosecution, as a, you are a young man who has done so much for, uh, you know, in, in the prosecution of corruption in this country. Beyond anybody. You understand me? He's making a lot of sacrifice. And you can see that he is, he is so, he was so surprised at the outcome. Because he's not the judge. All he can do and I think for, for the prosecutor to, you know, go as far as ensuring that the accused decides to plead guilty, it's not easy. Because that, the sums of money recovered could be, could be used to pay a lawyer who will go to town and employ all manner of tricks to frustrate the trial process. But for the, for the accused person to come and say, oh, I'm plead guilty, you have to give the credit to the prosecutor because he, he has assembled massive evidence. And, it, and and for how the accused person you know feels intimidated with the volume of evidence that has been assembled, but it is not the prosecutor who will decide the sentence. Okay, you? okay, go ahead. So uh, there's no way you can blame Jacobs. Mr. Shitu, Mr. Kiamu said something about the constitution, a lacuna in the constitution. If um, would amending the constitution help? Because in other crimes, some crimes like in China, for instance, when you embezzle, when you steal public funds like as it is in this case here, you are sentenced to maximum um, sentence, a life imprisonment or death in China. I mean, should the constitution be amended? I'm not saying it should be life or death, but why two years? This is precisely where the direction of the discussion should go. The primary assignment of the legislature, our legislature, is to make laws. It's to amend our laws, look at our various laws, those laws that are archaic, those laws that require amendment, those laws that, needs, that requires a fine tuning. That is the job primarily that our parliament ought to be doing. You understand me? So if you put two years in, 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 in a law as the maximum punishment, mm -hmm. a judge cannot impose a sentence beyond the two years. Even at his own discretion? He cannot do that. The maximum That's punishment the maximum is the maximum sentence. So if you are criticizing the judge in this case, study that law. What does the law provide? It provides for maximum punishment of two years. 
It also provides for an option of fine if the judge wishes, and that the judge is also at liberty to impose both the sentence and the fine. I think here, because the, the judge decided to, you know, impose the sentence and gave an option of fine. So he Given the, the gravity option. of the offense, one would have thought you will impose the sentence and leave out the option. And, and also, in addition to the option of fine, in addition. What if he leaves out the option of fine? Or he can he even leave the option of fine. Of two years. He can, yes, these are, these, are, these are issues within his discretion. He has three options. To impose the maximum sentence of two years. Yeah. To impose the maximum sentence of two years plus a fine. Okay. Or to impose just a fine. Which is uh, you understand me? With uh, you, or to say, or to say, I impose the maximum sentence, or you pay a fine, which is what he has done now. The fine, the and the man the walked away. You no. can see he entered his car and uh, well, that's how he paid. The, uh, he paid the fine and then walked away, which is the, which is mockery. Now, if a poor man is was to be fined in similar circumstances, would, would the man be allowed to walk away? You understand me? It, it, the money he paid. You want to ask whether it is, was it not part of the illicit loot? You understand me? So you are questioning the the exercise of discretion of the judge. That's what we are so saying does now. So that, that defeats now, the purpose. Hey, but you see, we can appeal. Fine. We can appeal. And which is what the FCC is trying to do. Go on appeal on the sentencing. You understand me? Particularly the option of fine that it was, it, it was not commensurate. With yeah. the offense. Even if they go on appeal on the sentencing, yes, the maximum you say it's two years. It's two years. Yes, because I said you think out with that law. Because in some of these countries which you mentioned, Italy, Germany, yes. and the rest of them, in Italy, for instance, it has to do with the reduced sentence, yes. not even with the yes. uh, charges. Yes. But in Poland, where they talk about, uh, they limit it depending on the way they choose to practice it. Yes. In Poland, they say there's a limited form of plea bargaining, yes. and that's applicable to minor felonies. Yes. And in that case. The sentencing is not more than 10 years. Yeah, that's correct. Minor felonies. That's correct. And so it depends on how we apply it here. Yes. I think what is wrong here are two things. And that's what we should be looking at. The abuse or the corruption of the process of plea bargaining. And two, lack of an effective legal framework to regulate the exercise. If there is a legal framework to regulate the exercise, the duties of the prosecutor will be specified. The duty, I mean, the obligation of the accused person will be specified. The role of the victim in the exercise will be specified. The role of the judge will be specified. For instance, it will provide that in a plea bargain arrangement, a judge cannot imp impose a ridiculous sentence. All this will have been specified in the legislation. And I don't see the reason why, given the enormity of the problems, be deadly in our legal system that all of us know. Chiefly of which undue delay is a major problem. All of us know this. Cases dragging on for 10 years, 12, 15 years, when all the witnesses will have died, can when vital documents will have lost. We what, know this is the problem. What can the NJC do? If we, we have already identified one problem, which yes. uh, Mr. Kamo also uh, talked about, that has to do with the constitutional review. But what about in this case, before we review the constitution, what can the NJC do? Because if you look at what uh, loads of people have been talking about this particular judgment, they say we should also beam the searchlight on judges. Well, you can only beam the, your searchlight on the judges if you have raw evidence of improper conduct on the part of the judge. Now, the question you want to ask yourself in this case is that did this judge act outside the law? I mean, your condemnation of this judge in this case is in the realm of sentiments. The man acted within the law. The law says you have the powers to impose the maximum sentence if you choose to. Or you can impose the maximum sentence plus a fine. Or you can just decide to impose just the fine. That's what the law says. And the man chose one of those options. He decided to impose the maximum sentence or a fine. You acted within the law. 